Is this working? Is it working? Hey, KGPF, I hope you can hear me. Let me double check. It said my um, my internet was unstable. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Please let me know. If you can, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Oh, cool. Guess who we're gonna be watching today? <laughs> who was that little boy in the picture? Well, we're about to see. It's just a little quick movie. It's actually, okay, thank you. You can hear me. It's actually, um, just so you, we know who we're praying about, it's another side of someone we all are familiar with so we can know more about this person. Because we don't really know him personally, right? <laughs> we don't have to. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it, yes, she said, Baba Selman. Okay. Yes, that was him. <laughs> that little cute face. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started. He looked deep even then. I don't know how, how old do you think he was in that picture? Probably like uh, eight or something. Like, can you imagine? Wow, beautiful. So we're going to look at the humble beginnings and this is an older film. So it's really, it's really interesting to hear his perspective. It's just, it's less than 20 minutes long, but it's just something, a, a really neat perspective. You ready? Ten, you think he's 10? <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, I'll stop. Let's put this in cinema layout. And here we go. See you on the other side. Salman Joshua Nimak always knew there was something unusual about him. For one, right from a tender age, he knew God's hand was upon him. There's this knowing you cannot explain, but then every time I watch TV and I saw anything that uh, had to do with ministry, the grace of God, there was this witness that I had within me. Someday <laughs> I'll be the one doing this, you know. And so... While most children his age were concerned with playing, Selman was almost always alone in his room, studying the Word of God. And one day, Selman raised his little hands in surrender to Jesus Christ during a Sunday school session. But while in secondary school, Selman began to experience the extraordinary in his life. It started when a mentor began to teach Selman how to know God even better. He taught us things like spiritual growth, quiet time. He formulated a quiet time booklet for us that we had to follow through. Uh, he taught us the ethics of good Christian character. He helped me uh, because I had uh, a bit of a challenge growing up in terms of complex and uh, trying to reconcile my dreams and the things that I see around me. It opened me up to every motivation that I needed. And I really loved God. I, I, I um, began to pursue him, seek him truly and sincerely from my heart. And that was when Selman began to witness the supernatural. We had a program where a man of God was invited and then he prayed for those who wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that would be an experience of a lifetime. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. We did extraordinary things in the school. I mean, there were five of us. We started working in miracles. I mean, real miracles. Uh, I was so super intelligent. It was amazing. I started seeing things in the spirit, didn't know what they were. I mean, angels, manifestations. I would receive words about things and they would happen. You know, I would pray for students. I remember praying for one of our students who was a scammer and he got healed. It wasn't a big deal because uh, we were just acting by faith. Sadly, we had a time when um, they preached against all of these things that we walked in and we really backslided. We're not prayerful again. We're not open to the things of the Spirit. We literally shut the door of the Holy Spirit. But all this changed with one encounter. On the 2nd of December, 2002, I'll never forget, someone walked up to me in the night 
and tapped me. I was sleeping. I mean, literally tapped me. I wasn't dreaming. And I woke up. I didn't see anybody, but I knew it was Jesus. I cannot tell you how I knew. I knew it was Jesus. That would be my first uh, dramatic encounter with him. I knew it was Jesus. I began to cry. I began to sob. I got down on my knees. I began to pray and I said, Lord, I rededicate myself for your use, for your service. By the time he got into the university, Salmon's hunger for God became unquenchable. I used to spend time uh, praying and just seeking God. And um, sometimes I'll go to the dam and um, just pray and tell God, Lord, I know that my life is supposed to bring you glory, but I'm tired of living a purposeless life. And, you know, I, I remember praying and crying and I'll stay sometimes from morning to night telling the Lord, you must use me. Tell me, let me know why I am here on earth. One night, I had a dramatic vision. Um, I was standing in front of the tower, really one of the hostels in the uh, uh, university campuses. And suddenly I saw a crowd of people. I couldn't see the end of them. It was a sea of people. And the people were crying, they were sobbing. And in that vision, they were saying there was no food and no water. I, and I said, really? I mean, I, was, I, was, I had compassion upon the people. Suddenly in the vision, it became like I had the key to the storehouse of that entire generation. And I asked the people, I said, is it my fault? They said, yes, it's your fault. We are dying of thirst, you know, talking about the bread of, uh, the, the water of life and the bread of life and all of that. And, and I told them, I, I will be coming down right now to rescue you. I got up from that vision. I cried and it put a fire in my spirit. I knew that God had called me to be a preacher, to be a minister. The most dramatic of all experiences was when I met Jesus himself. And there he was standing before me, the King of Kings himself. I have seen him. I know he's alive. I, I cannot tell you what he looks like. The beauty and the brilliance on his face, the love, the power, the light. I was flat on the floor like a dead man. I understand what Isaiah said. You know, he said, you know, the Lord high and lifted up and the strain of his robe. I saw him in his glory, Jesus. I knew instantly that this was Jesus Christ. He didn't tell me anything. All he did was stretch his hands towards me and a beam of light. There is no human way that light uh, would come upon me in the physical without destroying me. I mean, it would disintegrate me in seconds. But that beam of light, and remember the Bible says, the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding. That encounter brought a level of anointing into my life. I had unusual insights into the word of God. I, I suddenly was opened fully into the realm of angels, miracles, visions, insight, faith. Faith, the faith of the Son of God came upon me. I mean, I knew all things were possible. All things. The whole world needs to know Jesus Christ. Believe me, he's not one leader of a religion. He is Lord. When you see him, you will know the earth belongs to him. You will know he's not contending for a position. He's not scratching his head, wondering what to do. He's in control. I love him today beyond ministry i have seen his glory i have seen his grace but i can trade i mean i cannot trade any of these things for him let ministry go let the world go let money go let marriage go believe me believe me i mean this in the depths of my heart i will not trade the world for jesus christ Whew. amazing is all i can say we'll take a break now but we'll be back shortly with the concluding part of this incredible story about Selma's journey with God. Don't go anywhere.
Dear Emily, I dropped by again this morning to say hello. I guess you were running late. You ran right by me. At the noon hour, I thought we might have some time to spend together. But you were busy with your friends. And though you didn't invite me over later that night, I could truly sense your loneliness, your fears. And I want you to know that even though you had no time for me this morning or tonight, when you wake up tomorrow, I'll still be around, hoping that today you'll take some time to spend with me. Love always, Jesus. You can search the entire universe, but you'll never find anyone who knows you and loves you more than Jesus Christ. Would you like to meet him today? Call or write the 700 Club. Welcome back. Selma's story is one that challenges me, and I hope you're as eager as I am to know how it ended. Well, let's get back and see how it all unfolds. It all began with a deep longing for God. Then gradually, Salmon Joshua Nimak was opened into the realm of the supernatural. What began to happen blew even his mind. I would go to a place of solitude and just sit alone for hours and hours, digging on the scripture, fishing out things, writing all the visions. And many times the glory of God would literally come and mantle me. I mean, sometimes I would see a mist, a literal mist, a cloud, sometimes in the shape of a man. Sometimes the angels of God would come to me, uh, visiting me, bringing me words. This, the real experience is when you are in the realm of eternity, time is not a factor again. And as Salmon sought to know God better, he began to see a ripple effect of the same hunger he had for God in the lives of others. People began to come around. The presence of God is very attractive. I would share some of the experience with them. And sometimes the presence of God will come upon us, we'll cry, we'll weep pray, study. Uh, every evening was a time we looked forward to because after class, after all of this, I mean, we didn't have time for any other thing. No time for, it was a sacrifice. Everything, the making of a champion at any level requires sacrifice. You must forgo something. Many times the presence of God will be so strong, we'll have to take people, I mean, literally carry people back to their hostels. It was a dramatic experience. And in a short while, the campus was least prepared for what God began to do through Selman's life. People began to come uh, for me to just talk with them, to counsel them. The sick started coming and started praying for them. You know, when one person got healed, he would go back and tell more people, hey, come and see this and all of that. But at a point, it, began, it, it became um, a nightly unorganized meeting no ushers no nothing people would just come would sit down share the word i couldn't explain it I, I wasn't bringing the people they couldn't stop coming they were coming every night they would cry the presence of god i would teach for hours from about 10 till about three sometimes two four o'clock and these were students uh, you know and all of that i was also a student then so it, it was it was a challenging experience Thanks to Salmon's unrelenting pursuit of God, several thousands of people have come to know Jesus, including drug addicts, prostitutes, cult members, and many more. Countless more have been delivered from addiction to sex, masturbation, pornography, drinking, smoking, and several other vices common among young people. There have been many changes in my life since I met Joshua Selman. I was a little bit violent, but the ministry taught me humility. It brought it into me. I received a transformation in my spirit, fellowship with God, and I've received more of his knowledge. Has made me to be able to practice, like heal the sick, stretch my faith, and believe God for a lot of things that seem impossible. I can mention my finances. I can mention my academic makes then my relationship with God more, 
most importantly, it has taken a whole new level. I believe now we do is be like a friend. God, like a friend, like, like I don't send him. There's no barrier for me. I now understand how to earn the price of, of of what you want. Then pay the price, and you will get it. I know that God created me here for a purpose, and my purpose is to do His will because that's what the prayer that Jesus Christ gave to His disciples. And everyone has an assignment in every sector, not just being in church or preaching. But we could do this in our offices, in our homes, in our schools, anywhere we are, can be a blessing to people, and we can bring God's kingdom to that aspect and avenue. With thousands of such young hearts well taught and leaving the school with such deep understanding of their purpose, one can only imagine the great impact each of them will make in their society even after graduation. God is raising people. These are ordinary people. We must quit the ministry mindset and begin to think kingdom. Because the revival is coming upon the earth. Greater than the Phoenix revival, the Lord told me this. Greater than the Azusa Street revival, our fathers of faith, Shambach, uh, Osborne, Charles and Francis Hunter, Catherine Kuhlman, Smith Wigglesworth, our fathers of faith, they are now the cloud of witnesses, but they left a prophecy with our generation that a revival would come greater than the Azusa Street revival, and we are preparing. Can I tell you something? This country and the world is separated into two mission fields and training grounds. Just like the whole terrorist camp, God is training his people. We do not see them yet. Ordinary people in the marketplaces, housewives, students, our universities are also schools of the spirit. There is a revival that the world is not ready for. And it's not going to be the way the, the revival, God is sending media apostles, media generals, men and women who will invade politics, government. It's not just going to be the poopy thing again. And this is why we must stay on course to get the patterns. It is coming. It draws closer every day. I sense it every time. This is why I have a sense of urgency to prepare God's army. And Salman said that this is one desire. Although he has graduated from the university, he also says his assignment on that campus and beyond is not over yet. And he intends to keep at it until God tells him his next assignment. I love the Lord with all my heart. I love him beyond ministry. I love him beyond title. I measure success according to how much of the plan and the prophecy of God on the earth is being achieved. See, that's, that's what we call success. So I want to see that the whole earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. As much as um, it will be wonderful to be remembered for pioneering different revivals, being a general of faith and all of these things, I think the greatest testimony, I covet the testimony of Enoch. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. It's a different thing to walk for God. I want to walk with God so closely that this earth will not be worthy of holding me again. And it will be a glorious exit. And if it means me being called a failure from the earth perspective to walk with him, this is all I want. I love him with all of my heart. And my greatest testimony and what I want to be remembered for is that I'm Joshua Selma Nimak walked with God and he was not <laughs> mm. you've seen and heard it all it's time to heed the call it's simple Jesus is coming back soon are you ready for his coming and while we are awaiting his coming we must remember that we are all here on assignment and our time is fast running out so we all God's people must rise up and stop wasting time. Stop being distracted by things that don't matter in the long run. The Bible encourages us to redeem the times because the days are evil. You heard Selman. It's not about how polished you are, how educated you are. God has well equipped each of us for the task that we each have. All we need to do is spend quality time with him, get specific instructions and get to work. 
And even if you feel that you haven't heard anything specific from God, he has called us all to do the work of an evangelist. Love somebody and lead them to Christ. Don't get them saved from the destruction that is to come. Now, for you listening to me, and you know that God is calling you. You may have been running from the call all this time. It's time to stop running, my dear friend, and do the only thing that will give your life meaning. Obey God. Perhaps you've allowed sin and past mistakes to come between you and Jesus. Then let's start by getting things right immediately. Or maybe you've even, you haven't even made Jesus your Lord and Savior. It's not too late for that either. As you've heard, he's coming soon. So let's prepare for him. So why not repeat these words after me and mean them? Say, dear God, I come to you because I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you in the way I've lived my life. And I'm asking you to forgive me. By the blood of Jesus, the Christ, your son who died. Come and live in my heart, Lord Jesus. Come and make my life your own so that I will live for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, let's pray for the release of God's power over you to rise up and fulfill God's assignment for you here on earth. Let's pray. servants of Jesus sake. So there are things within our experiences with God that are also very, very powerful. So, so I just want to tell us, I want you to tell us how you started. How did you start? I mean, what year was this? What were the dealings? Uh, did you start in a school? And what would that school be? Did you go to a theological seminary? So let's let just, I mean, those brief background things, how the dealings of God with you started. And now you are able to arrest and maximize the economy of what the Lord was bringing to you, you know, in those days of your relative obscurity. Thank you. Very, very touching. Please, question. can we give it a moment? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so. uh, I'm, I'm wondering what to omit and what to say because it's a very, it's a very pregnant I question. Understand. But our attempt to. Um, I, I believe that um, my my call and my operation in ministries is, is quite a a very unique and unconventional wow. one. I've, I've I've always had the passion for the things of God. Wow. I, I really have um, had that. I had the privilege of um, being raised by very godly parents. You wow. know? So I had that moral background right from. That was a was it? Just, just, yes, yes. all right. So, um, and coincidentally, my grandfather yeah. was um, the the first president of what we call Cooking Church of Christ in Nations. Oh, wow. based, yeah. So, wow. um, so of that background and. Um, my encounters with God started relatively early, but wow. because I didn't have an opportunity now, I'm careful, uh, these are very sensitive questions, yeah, 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 but yeah. then I didn't have the opportunity to be exposed to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Uh, the, the was concerned, yeah. placed emphasis on morality yeah. and all of that, which was wonderful, very yeah. good foundation. Yeah. But the opportunity for... Uh, the ministry of the word in terms of its accuracy and yeah. the spirit was not really there. So the, I had that that privilege. And then um, I think the first, I would say the first real preparation and encounter for ministry mm -hmm. happened under the leadership of a, um, a dear man who was my principal in wow. secondary wow. school. Yeah, so it had, it was, um, the, the strange thing about it, it was that, um, it was a very, it was, it was a very small school. Wow. In Josh? Yes. You know, right. Plateau State. Yeah. There was a small school. And so we were not so exposed. And the man, he was an Anglican, an Anglican 
priest. Wow. The reverend then, he had spent a major part of his training time in the U.S. Oh. So he came and uh, he inculcated a lot of values, you know, I can begin to list so many things that he did. So he created that atmosphere. You can imagine being in an environment where as you're studying, there's a worship song playing in the background. Oh, exactly. So he, it was just his personal passion to train us. Wow. The credit should go to him. Was an it old man primary now. school? Yes, it was. Oh, was yes, it was. School, okay. And and so we had that opportunity. And um, um, aside from the normal uh, subjects that we studied, I know that we at that level, <laughs> and <laughs> and then we studied spiritual. Wow. So we were taught to allowed for a lot of spiritual expression. He wow. was really was with us for a very short time, wow. but um, it was it was quite a great one. So I, I started having lots of encounters from a very very young age. Very young age, yeah, I started having um, the several encounters with God. I started having angelic encounters. Now, at that time, because I did not have a system that would explain some of those things, wow. I thought everybody used to have those experiences. Oh, okay. You know, unfortunately, you know, it, it, it was as though it was everybody's experience. So I think that, that that's that's I would say those were the uh, the foundational moments. And um, it was it was quite an impact on my life, uh, what that man did, because he really, really mentored us. He taught us a lot of things. He created a devotional himself. Wow. Yeah. Yes. And so corporately in the school, we started specific books at the same time time so there's wow. no such thing as rushing ahead or behind you had to fall had to fast before the the school resumed wow. uh, and then wow. every teacher would have to pray before the lectures that unfortunately all of these things that i'm telling you died after one year wow. this is so this is the unfortunate part of it but um I hope that in the near future I would have the opportunity. It's it's my it's my dream to be able to come up with something like from the heritage of that which we have. So I think okay. yes. So did you did you the school doubled as a seminary? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. If you have an idea, let me use something in the military. Um, you can go to NMS. Okay. While yeah. it is school, you yeah. are still yeah. yeah. Exactly. So exactly. yes, the goal. Exactly. It was a school that was founded by now Arch Bashi. Oh, that's a yes, job, job. yes, the, yes. So it was, it was his dream, and he was a bit close to my dad, and he had a personal passion that I'd be, become a priest. You know, he just felt that it was a <laughs> thing, and uh, I'm <laughs> still a priest. I mean, <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> thank God. Is you are still a priest? Yes. Yes. So I wanted to speak to the impact of fathers and mentors of ministry okay. or ministers. Yeah. As well, young minister, I know you didn't quite capture that yes. in this message. Um, one of the things people find difficult to, you know, align with in ministry is how with your father play. And of course, that of mentors too. And what is the difference between a mentor and a father? It's a very difficult question. I wish the answer were easy. Mentorship is like a double-edged sword. It depends on how it is held. Sustainably rise, not just in ministry, in any aspect of life, if you do not have an opportunity and a platform to be guided and mentored by one who has gone ahead and has provided that. The disadvantage of mentorship is that you will conform to the beliefs, the mindset, and also the limitation of the person ahead of you. Uh, which has played it, you know. So there is a balance. Um, the concept of fatherhood and mentorship is not a concept that I've talked so much about. 
and I have my reasons for it because um, for those who were raised in the southwest, um, most of the churches there were owned, uh, do I use the word owned, established by individuals, single individual. Yeah. Now the background that I came from did not allow that. You understand? It was an extremely conservative background. So you only had access to a pastor for maybe two years at the max. And he, so with 10 years, you would have six, seven, eight people. So the idea was, um, I found it strange when I started ministry and I saw the, the idea of mentorship, not downplaying it, but I'm saying that for someone who came, uh, it's not a concept that that is very easy with a typical middle belton because wow. uh, the anglican context does not allow that kind of thing it should be a pastor's son yeah. then automatically you have the opportunity or if you're privileged to have people who are close to you but it was not a normal thing to just have people easily who can guide you it was a responsibility left to your parents and left to your seriousness wow. if you were serious enough you would find a way to look for someone you know but then generally speaking um i believe in fatherhood i believe in mentorship um the most important thing in in mentorship is the ability to get the mindset and the information of the mentor uh, the difference between fatherhood and mentorship is that in mentorship the info is your goal but in fatherhood the relationship is your goal you can be mentored by a man's book mentorship and then the 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 covering that that comes under that and the privilege of that grace so fatherhood is is more or pronounced for people who are actively in ministry as it were mm. business people don't talk so much of fatherhood they talk of mentorship mm. so i see fatherhood as a unique expression of mentorship uh that provides guidance especially for people in ministry yeah. Yeah. Uh, you meet man and say who is your father it doesn't make <laughs> sense rather you say who is your mentor mm. and that is not it may not be limit um the leverage that comes yeah. from their credibility and sometimes the blessings that come from that spiritual tribe you are connected to mm. and a lot of other things the opportunity to guide to counsel at a more personal level they are not just interested in dispensing information they give you an opportunity to see their scars to learn mm. and all of that so that is very important provided um provided the patterns are kept now i will quickly want to observe respectfully yes, that fatherhood when not guided fatherhood does not just mean someone ahead of you no i believe the same way um you don't sit down and cross your leg and select an earthly father it is a connection that happens by grace yes most times in its original context from scripture a father is one who begat you in the gospel yeah. Yeah. that means one who gave birth to you in the gospel mm. but it's not always true pragmatically speaking because if you were born within a circle whose belief you no longer um you know or whose pattern is not similar you may have to trust god to get um mm. um you know all of that so i and i also believe that there are requirements for fatherhood mm. and, and and people it, it, age is not necessarily the proof of fatherhood mm -hmm. and being in ministry ahead of someone is not necessarily a proof of fatherhood these are all that's why i said it's yeah. not a very yeah. Yeah. many people have been deceived today because they had fathers and mentors yeah. many people have been blessed today because they have fathers mm -hmm. or mentors now let me observe if you will lend me one more minute on this yes. issue yes. Uh, i think that the fatherhood and mentorship since them in africa requires respectfully speaking a total overhaul mm. um there is a very gross div 
deviation from God's pattern. Mm. The idea of fatherhood in Africa, and I say this, I, I love the body of Christ. My position about honor to ministers and the body of Christ is one that has been established. So I speak from a standpoint of love or respect. But I think that um, the demands that that the, the, sometimes it means that you are in a position where you have no will of your own. You are in a position where you must subscribe to the pattern that is given. Otherwise, there is some cost or something that is waiting for you. Uh, there are there are financial remunerations that come that you are not necessarily in control. Those things are honestly insecurities from people yeah. that they just you know who because of fatherhood they can be told by a father relocates to another place is an instruction some maybe leave your wife is an instruction wow. there are people who the fathers demand details of their finance details of their private life with their maybe husband's wife wow. details of church membership of so these are excesses and so um it is not just enough to say i have a father or i am a father or i am a mentor we must probe into the purity of what is happening there yeah. with reference to scripture so this is my position it is true that young ministers must be able to trust god to connect uh there are many people who are effective today because God delayed their being connected to certain oh, people. Yeah. Had they been connected to those people yeah. earlier, yeah. they would not. It takes it takes a lot, yeah. and then of course, uh, um, I think some of these threats that us, yeah. but eventually, probably they found that look. I can relate, uh, I mean, with that. It takes uh, hours of laboring yes. the word, praying. You know, one breaks into these things. And uh, so on every day, what, what do you do? And, and what I'm saying that is that without making a doctrine out of that, or trying to legislate that this is the only acceptable, and that's why I made that disclaimer. Um, people can also learn from that. What do you do? Because Paul also showed uh, Timothy, and titles, the patterns, you know. I mean, this is what I do, this is how I handle this. So when you look at spiritual capacity and stamina, what are those things that you do from time to time, you know, that give you this edge? Okay. Um, in, in truth, there are really no secrets as it were. Okay. Um, the, the principles that govern spiritual growth and stamina uh, were seen in the life of Jesus. Yeah. and were seen in the early church. Yeah. Primarily, it is the ministry of the word and prayer that is responsible for building people. Yeah. It just comes in different variations, yeah. but that is the basis, and that from a child, yeah. Yeah. thou hast known the Holy Scripture, scripture that is able unto salvation. salvation. Yeah. So I, number one, I take my assignment and seriously i really take it seriously i have the privilege of, of um 
I have had encounters that continue to the unique privilege that God has given me to serve this generation. And I understand that many people are depending on my spiritual growth and my spiritual health. Amen. So that in itself, primarily I'm driven by my love for God. And then I'm driven by the, the awareness of the responsibility, the demand that um, comes with this grace and with this calling. Yeah. So studying, um, not just scriptures. I study the body of Christ. Mm. It's part of the apostolic responsibility wow. um, to be able to study the body of Christ and to help by the Spirit to define the coordinates of activities. Mm. The apostolic office is not about preaching. Mm. It's spiritual administration. Mm. You are responsible for capturing the speakings of God as a portion to a generation within wow. dispensation wow. and then to guide the coordinates of his execution so mm. that there is no error, there is no balance, imbalance. Mm -hmm. And to do that, it will require you to have the open-heartedness to look at the body of Christ from a very broad spectrum, wow. not from a critical as I listen to messages, I just try to buy into the mind of what is happening in the body of Christ. Yeah. Um, and then um, I, I study a lot. I'm a student of knowledge. Wow. I study scripture. I study materials. Wow. Uh, I build my spirit. And then I spend time praying. Wow. I do. I do. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. In addition to that, yes, now, please. I mean, there's a question that just came up that now. We're in this COVID era now. Yes. What What do you think is the message of the Spirit for the church? And post-COVID period, uh, post-COVID mm. era, what, yes. what, what do you think the Spirit is? You said, you said it in passing in the message. But, but I want to, I know you're a man, just like you said, you have a, a deep uh, kind of a dealings with God, yes, and, which was respect to some of those things. What what adjustment do you want ministers to make mm. going? forward in the scheme of things and how do you see everything about church ministry playing out in the days to come okay thank you very very powerful question yeah. in um truthfully speaking i believe that when you when you read mark 16 15 yeah. um it says go ye into the world so the mission is go ye the location is the entire cosmos yeah. the assignment is to preach the gospel yeah. the object is creation the only thing that was left flexible in the great commission yeah. is the strategy mm. um that means that men and women of god must be able to trust god for grace wow. to by the leading of the spirit and consistent to scripture reinvent themselves to be able to be applicable to living in today's world wow. in terms of the dynamism and the flexibility that ministry requires Amen. especially ministry among young people mm. uh, there's a lot of rigidity and rituals that we may have to tone down mm. that were opinions of men yeah. as it were otherwise we'll not be able to reach especially this generation so there will be a lot there will be need for a lot of flexibility. The truth must remain. Uh, the pillars that represent the Christian faith must be unbending, but there must be a lot of flexibility. And then, generally speaking, to encourage men and women of God, there are three things I want to say. Number one, we are men. It is a revelation, uh, uh, I think I preached that in Pastor Shola's church. Mm -hmm. It's a revelation that um, our generation 
must be able to know we are men we we make mistakes we are men we see things from different perspectives we are men we grow uh, the narrative that has been given about ministry uh, expects some level of perfection from ministers perfection in terms of flawlessness mm. and that, that is not going to happen yeah. time is a revealer of the humanity of all men and it does not have to be something evil or immoral or this just the weaknesses of men you know um, i think that it is a revelation that most pe people preachers must have the unashamedness to let people know that look i am a man who is helped by god god does not use us because we're perfect he uses us because we are broken mm. wow. you see so i think it's because the days that are coming our generation no longer has the kind of sacredness and regard, especially for preachers, the way it used to be in the days of the fathers. Yeah. Um, you know, true. nobody would dare say certain things. But now people are very vocal. Anybody can write a book, go online, say anything about anybody, you know, and those things will multiply in the days to come, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So the earlier we let people know that look we are men we are men that are helped by god we continue to strive taking advantage of the grace of god to live lives that are worthy of emulation but burdening and those who are preaching um so that when a man for instance falls sick you know in as much as we believe in divine health we trust god for these things but yeah. there's something that should be you know should bring an issue of shame sometimes yeah. the minister may have family problems marital problems and sometimes they can be in isolated proportions mm -hmm. it can and so that destroy them psychologically and take them a long time to build because members are surprised okay sometimes they are children don't turn out to be the best representation of what their advocacy proposed and these are the kinds of loopholes that the devil is looking for and then he says you claim you are this you have raised people but look your ch child look this i think that um um in and they can eat you will be surprised right tag and say pastor eating <laughs> and it will be a shock like i mean do you i understand what they are trying to say but we must be very intentional about letting them know that look we are men i can be hungry i can eat you know jesus did not hide his humanity yeah. he was hungry he yeah. caused the fig tree he flogged people in the temple i mean this is jesus your jesus our jesus so the Bible says, let this mind be in you. It also includes the fortitude to just admit that look where a human being and all of that. So that that is my first message to me men of god but to balance it up the second is we must know that there is a grace that provides for a level of excellence that is not human um, so in as much as we admit that we are men we must not be respectfully we live in a day and age that downplays on the anointing makes it look like what is there to have revelation what is there to be anointed? Is it really true that people are getting healed? Is it really true that people are getting blessed? You know, sometimes 
and it reduces ministry to just a social welfare program the degree to which you conform people Hallelujah. the ex the investment of the spirit upon our lives Amen. no matter what it is so in as much as we let people know that we are earthen vessels but we must finish that scripture that there is the excellency of power that is at work in us and so i want to encourage men and women of god that ordinary ministry and jealousy and all the other fruits that come with mediocrity mm -hmm. there is space for everyone to press to a level of fire of power and grace mm -hmm. most of the dimensions that are given uh, uh, to individuals is for the people can outsource these graces to improve their own lives mm -hmm. so i think it's very important that ministers understand that there is a divine dimension to us and we must contend for it mm -hmm and carry out supernatural ministry. And then finally, I would want to say that important also for ministers to understand that the best of us is only an effective member in the body. That no single individual sustains the ability to have and communicate the whole counsel of God. Yeah. I appreciate God for what he's done in my life and what he's doing, but I am only an effective minister and I must be able to, I must intentionally let the body of Christ know that no matter how accurate my alignment is, I do not have the whole counsel of God. And I must be able to uh, be faithful in the dimension communicated to me. But as I mentor people, I must be able to let them know that, look, you must expand your appetite to receive of other dimensions that are in Christ, in the body, but may not be available in my life as far as dispensing uh, that dimension is concerned. I, I, I'll say this because there yeah, is... Yeah yes there is a bias that happens to men when god deals with them if god is calling me to the prophetic ministry most of my dealing will be centered around prayer discernment um the ministry of the spirit warfare deliverance uh the curriculum of my working and all of that now if i come up from that express or that limitation to make me need other members of the body just because i have it if lead, the church is down yeah. in terms of every of the grace you are doing well yeah. but i must be able to say look i mean i will yeah. be faithful in common heartedly searching out for the ones we just admitted it yeah. the male we receive the applause that make you know never had any mind mm. because they will be very limited but the whole world will be in great mm. the whole world will all start from me i must have the unashamedness to be able to be vocal way like what you are doing what that in terms of awareness our level of alignment and our accurate uh, there are people who are serious there are people who are not serious unfortunately we can't generalize and clap for everybody mm. there must be room to challenge uh, we must be able to love the growth of the body of christ formation does not come from us mm. you wow. remember the scripture uh -huh. so they began to, if the healing does not come say congratulations the yeah. most important thing is you are healed uh, yeah not to say why were you healed <laughs> not through me you know that kind of thing so and it doesn't mean we are bad it just means we are human we have to train ourselves into getting to a point of stability and emotional security wow. so wow. that we can allow people to be blessed people have caused people for listening to messages of other people people have caused people from attending conferences of other people now of course as a leader you are responsible for the growth and uh, the building of the people who are under your care and you want to know that the people are feeding properly yeah. and you want to unashamedly guide their health mm -hmm. but then sometimes those things go to the extreme and then it just becomes insecurity wow. um wow. so so this this will be my three the threefold encouragement to to pastors wow. yes, sir. Wow. Well, thank you very much sir. my pleasure this is also a bit personal. You are still single. Yes. <laughs> How do you handle the issue of sisters? And, and that is also a lesson for your ministers in the sense that I mean, see how God has helped you. Uh, and I can relate with that because I also know one or two people who um, had a similar deal with God and by the grace of God uh, rose into the purpose of God for their lives before they married. 
So for your ministers and, and for yourself, someone like you, how do you balance that side? I mean, to be focused, to be single, and how do you deal with sisters? Okay, I appreciate. Um, I, I think the issue of ladies and sisters and so on, and it's not limited to whether you are married or not. It's only minimized when you are married. That, that's what I believe. Anybody who will be very honest, you're right, you know, uh -huh. so um, I think the key is values mm. and principles. Wow. Yes. The key is to be able to put values uh, because I would submit to you that um, many people who may have problem with sisters, the ladies don't intentionally come to cause trouble. They are just being ladies. Mm -hmm. And uh, ladies will generally want a shoulder with all due respect to all the ladies following and the ladies around <laughs> you understand yeah. i'm not sure i'm not sure that uh, there are few ladies and 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 i think let's honor what the holy ghost is doing in the body i don't there are few ladies that will actually get up intentionally to say i want to destroy there are people like that but i think what happens is that the devil takes advantage of the vulnerability and the compassion of both the leader and the people involved. Because once you are emotionally connected to people, for instance, you have a sister or son in the church or the fellowship, and you know about their background, you know about what they've gone through, you understand the peculiarity of their dealing, and they've been open to you on that wise. Naturally, you will be soft-hearted towards those people. And even when they misbehave, from the lens of what you know about them, you will express a lot of compassion. Mm -hmm. Now, that compassion can become dangerous. That is why you must balance it with values. Values like um, visitations, counselings, you know, ladies, you don't just invite sisters to say, come to my house, come and help me cook rice, cook beans. It may not be seen, but you are near Sodom. The Bible says when 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 um uh, what's his name when lot when lot left abraham he didn't go into sodom he stayed near sodom, near sodom. by the time abraham would come to rescue lot he was, he was in the middle of sodom so um sometimes uh, sometimes it's important to to just have standards and values i believe that when you have values and you're strict on it even though Many people may misunderstand you, but eventually you will get... And, and it's more dangerous today because of the presence of social media. Yeah. You know, um, there are all kinds of platforms that create connections and all of that. Yeah. Uh, and the devil is really out to see how he can discredit ministers and bring, you know, people down through this avenue. So I think yeah. the key is to set very strict values. For instance... Let me give maybe three or four. Generally, you can have a standard like, okay, you will not counsel a single sister alone. For instance, or in the night. These are very good uh, principles. And, and now, I want to say something respectfully, and I don't mean to, to uh, hurt the body or something. I think... There is a bit of balance that we need to put or addition to what we know to be the communication of the grace of god because i think that if not checked a bit that may be an area that the devil may take advantage of if the concept of the grace of god is not properly understood it can become a license for licentiousness you understand what i'm trying yes, to say yes. yes i don't mean yes, to yes I'm, you know that sense of god does not condemn people but the consciousness of right and wrong is important we have traffic lights even though we are intelligent people mm -hmm. the traffic lights help to bring coordination yeah. so those yeah. kinds of things uh because sometimes for as little as what i've said is for many people they can feel what is the meaning of that you know, there is a grace of God that grants you grace to say no to this. But uh, pragmatically speaking, you are also a psychological being. Mm. And biology and, psychologic, uh, and psychology plays its role in our lives. Yeah. So sometimes creating some of these standards will help us. Mm. Um, 
if 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 you are living with a lady for instance that you are not married with uh, you don't have to do anything wrong mm. for it to destroy you wow the psychological torture of the imagery you are giving room to will frustrate your prayer life will frustrate your concentration will frustrate a lot of things and then it will it will give room for so many things so this generally my encouragement for people especially we young ministers and then most especially uh, people who are single uh are not married yet i think that that the encouragement um will be create standards trust god for grace it's easier said than done in all fairness but i think it's good to create standards and then number two be visionary in the bible vision helps people to stay on course wow. Wow. lack of vision is what sponsors distraction there is a way you can be so visionary you look at your watch it's eight o'clock in the morning next time you check it is 10 p.m because you are so engaged you have sermons to prepare you have several things to do when you are excessively idle mm. you have to pick your phone from checking a sermon you go to a video you should not go to you see that from there before you know it until you are in sodom so these are some of the things we are talking about i think the key is standards and then number two build a community of like-minded people having a kingdom community is the key to sustaining kingdom values wow. um working in isolation is very dangerous mm. a community life creates a healthy system of check and balance mm. you see so so that so that 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 is very and then number three practice periodic retreats wow and i i, I am shocked in all honesty at the fact that people can be busy in ministry for a very long time and not have i'm not talking of the usual weekly retreat or these just two hours where most of it you are sleeping i mean a serious heartfelt retreat from the depth of your heart where you stay with god and when you are with god don't tell lies don't go to god as a man of god you go to god sincerely now it's easy for you to clap for me as joshua selman and so it's only god that knows the truth about me yeah. so when i go to god the one who i cannot hide i say okay god please deal with me and god can say okay be careful lust is growing in your heart here pride is growing in your heart here mm -hmm. maybe um pressures are mounting on you and maybe your prayer life is not as effective as that and i say okay god thank you supply the grace for the next level the the key to being sustain the ministries to be truthful to yourself very truthful to yourself and when you go before god be as and honest if you go to god as mog and uh, you go to god as a colleague in ministry uh, very soon things will go bad you must when i go to god i go with an open heart and i go very sincerely search my heart truthfully oh god Hallelujah. and anything god tells me whether i have proof for it or not i believe it if i go before god now and god says you are an armed robber i believe him i will not say where, where whose money did i steal i will start rolling on the ground and say show me mercy before i disappoint myself because you know god does not have future everything is his realm is now so when god speaks some of what he's saying will not be in your now but it's a possibility that is enshrined in you like a dna so you kill it before it destroys you in the future the key is honesty that transparency mm -hmm. i think we need to be more transparent human beings don't have that fortitude to show wow. us mercy mm -hmm. so we must go to the one who is able to take us just as we are and build us so that would be my thank you very much sir. i just have two more questions or yes, so, sir. so i can wrap this up um this is also a bit uh, also controversial okay um but i just wanted to shed light to use this opportunity so in the last uh, two three weeks there was one of your videos making rounds i know possibly you've heard about it um you know we have some boys on the <laughs> on the social media who just they're uh, stalking traders to attack ministers so you were talking about uh, the spiritual impact of lagos and abelkuta and you said um, if god is going to do something significant in the lives of people i don't know how you actually oh, put it oh i understand that he must 
Uh, so some people start fighting that. So I just want you to lay that to rest oh. once and for all, because I, I also saw, just like you said, I observe what is going on in the body. I saw that uh, some of um, uh, your supporters, some of the people also were confused because I saw the reactions and the counter reactions and, and uh, I just, I mean, see this as an opportunity to just clarify the matter. Okay. So what exactly are you trying to communicate so okay. that people will have that uh, and we just lay to rest? It, it's important. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm not on social media. Yeah, so that's, that's why. Most I, of all these things, I don't know. I'm asking because but, I know you're but, but two things, number yeah. one, you see, um, it is not, it is not necessarily the correctness or the wrongness of what I've said that is the issue. Mm. It is the fact that when you seek for truth with an open heart, you will find it. If you don't find it with me, you will still find it in the body. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, let's assume that I'm totally wrong and everything I've said is nonsense. No problem. Does that really become a basis mm. for you to be in error? There are many more accurate voices than me in the body. Yeah. And if your goal is really growth, the Holy Spirit is more loving. He's too loving to allow one man's error destroy so many people. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to probe the motive behind those things. Yeah. Yeah. We are men. And so I'm, before addressing it, no yeah. matter how wrong, let's assume that it's even the whole sermon that is nonsense. <laughs> if I die today, Joshua Selman, or if all my messages are edited completely from the internet, it's just the unique expression of the grace of God upon my life that will be missed. Spiritual growth will continue. Yeah. So I don't think I should be such a big deal. Thank God for the influence that I have. But the when people begin to attack a man of God, uh, for instance, in a way and coin out maybe sentences, phrases, and all of yeah. that, no, oh, the Holy Spirit is speaking through a verse. Now, I'm, I'm saying in an instance where, because even if this is wrong, this will not be the last wrong thing I will say. <laughs> that, that, that is the honest truth. You, you, you get the point now. Doctors, people die from the hands of doctors every day. And we go to the hospital and call them doctors. We call them professors. We give them awards. They receive Nobel Prizes. I mean, be fair on men of God. Now, where there is a problem is where when the man of God stands as an absolute authority yeah. and now says, what I'm saying is absolute, don't listen to anybody again. Now, that's, that's a problem. Yeah. Anybody who knows me from the inception of ministry, I have always been open and truthful to tell yeah. people, look, I am only an effective member of the body of Christ, number yeah. two, I am also a student in the school of the spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I communicate my dealings, I communicate them based on several things. Now, yeah. correcting, let me use the opportunity to say this and then I'll now address yes, the sir. issue. Yeah. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Mm -hmm. wow. Just because you observe error or imbalance or mistake does not give you the credence. Mm. Because this is a mistake all around. Pulpits yeah. are full of everybody trying to correct everybody. No. Uh -huh. Correcting the body of Christ is an, an office. office. And the first requirement of that office is love. Wow. Not power. Not revelation. Yeah. You see that? Our children will edit what we are calling Rema today. <laughs> the same way we are editing the revelation of the fathers. As at the time they received, respectfully speaking, fathers like papa hagin when they wrote what they wrote you know i remember papa hagin saying something like um uh, the anointing of the spirit only flows through a cloth or material i remember years ago when i was in ministry i asked somebody to go and stand at the end of the wall and i touched the wall from here and they went to carry him on the ground hmm. and i said the wall is not a piece of paper i was just trying to show the excellency now if i attack papa hagin i'm stupid because i am growing and our children will edit what we now see. Mm. It wow. says this present truth. Wow. So I don't know who the gentlemen are who edited that, but the first thing I want to tell them is I love you. I do not believe whoever you are, the 
pastor or the uh, media people i don't believe that you are intentionally trying to maybe challenge me or this i love you with all my heart and i know that you are probably doing your best that you know to be a contribution to the body of christ and i salute you for the courage wow. to even be able to come there that's number one i i also salute you for the opportunity to be able to detect what you think is an area of controversy my only observation may be that next time is wiser and better to make effort to reach the man of god yeah. to try to say okay sir you preach this and while listening to you i made an observation would you want to shed light mm. if the man demonstrates rebellion mm. and demonstrates hard-heartedness yeah. then it now qualifies you to say okay look i think this is rebellion because the the person whoever is saying that does not have both the moral and the spiritual credence to to vet all of that yeah. Yeah. It, with all humility most likely someone else who loves me will challenge you and say where are your results <laughs> and you see it's not whether you are for me or against me no being for me and attacking the man does not profit me it yeah. will still hurt the body generally yeah. so we must love the growth of the body more than our reputation yeah. i don't have a problem being criticized yeah. i don't have a problem Same looking man. controversial yeah. no 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 no. Yeah. i'm a man if i die you only cry for seven days <laughs> try to raise me back to life eventually you throw me and life continues so i think that um we will there are many messages from the most accurate of any man there are messages that you may pick certain things that you feel based on the mentorship you have received mm -hmm. or based on your doctrinal standpoint, it is an error. Yeah. I think it's wise and better that when you do want to administer those things, it must be very vocal that the love of God is seen in you. Yeah. And you must also be sure that what you are saying is not something you will regret tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because we see in part so in a bid to correct somebody do not get into error yourself but as far the you know is the cross of the apostolic ministry i mean yes, yes. it will be very childish for a man of god who has a measure of influence to be surprised when you're you know apostle you're, you're speaking i'm sorry about what is your people wonder also why i entertain some things on my social media andrews yes you know i preach i say and people come and you see me having conversation with them, you know? All I just say is that don't use rude language. Don't be abusive. Let's discuss. Well, but most times, you see, Pastor, yeah. most times the people who try to challenge different men of God, the yes. truth of the matter is that um, for most of them, i think it's just the frustration that comes with not getting sufficient results wow. in all honesty and when that frustration becomes outspoken mm -hmm. they secretly seek for a chance to find something that becomes a, a you know an anchor to authorize and they will find it you see there is a difference between coming from a standpoint of love yeah you see that and yeah. coming from a standpoint where you are trying to show that oh you are clapping for this man let me tell you yeah. he's not worth that clap mm -hmm. because of this so yeah. uh -uh. there are many ways to correct yeah. the goal is to try to tell a generation you are hyping this honor too much mm -hmm. so you delay it which yeah. is unnecessary yes. because honor is a grace <laughs> there's a difference between honor and respect mm -hmm. You see, you can respect yourself, mm. but you can't honor yourself. Mm. Honor is conferred upon you by an authority higher than you. Wow. You see, so um, mm. these are some of the things. But but for the thing I said, I remember the statement that he said yeah. I made. Yeah. In a pastor's uh, uh, church, I will not want to mention his name. He's a man I respect dearly. Wow. So we're talking on doors. Yeah. And so I was speaking about portals and the prophetic implication of portals. Yeah. And I was saying that there are certain territories, the way we have mineral resources, yeah. there are certain territories that when God wants to announce you, he will cause your feet to make contact with those territories. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Now, I didn't teach it as a doctrine. Yeah. 
if i did not teach a thing as a doctrine paul will say i say this as a man yeah. you are subject to your interpretation of it and I, everything i said in that sermon is not wrong so if you think this is wrong or your revelation is higher than what i've said just jump it and be edified by the remaining things that are there you know uh, and uh, and if you have to edit the video maybe for your consumption my videos are free online you can edit that part as far as your consumption i i think it's too small it was a statement that was not more than uh you know all, all of that but, but for for all the people let me say this for all the people who love me and may try to attack that person leave our apostle no 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 please don't be hard on them give people a chance to be wrong too he's wrong is wrong so if if i am wrong and he corrects me in a wrong way yeah. let us show the excellency of what the love of christ can do so at first i salute his courage to make the observation whatever observation and second i pray for him that he will not reap the harvest the way he has sown the seed it's not it's, it's not even just one person that, that's what i'm saying it doesn't matter of course Whoever. only god knows the number of uh yeah. it's not these things you see the sacrifice of the fathers should teach us lessons mm. there is a level of success you cannot get to and have everybody clap for you yeah. and it is important it's not it's not it is important that that variety of observation is there so you cannot you cannot only love people who agree with you yeah. no people have the right to disagree yeah. and yeah. it helps people to grow because yeah. when people see where they disagree with you or your revelation it gives them room to go and study yeah. and it helps the people you are leading to be bereans themselves yeah. Yeah. you yeah. see yeah. so probably that uh, whatever it is now may have made somebody who listens to me and loves me so much to say look let me now settle down and listen yeah. if i make a mistake or i say something wrong to the body of christ believe me but i'm not too proud and arrogant to say body of christ this is how i saw it yesterday now i've seen clara i'm yeah. sorry yeah. and all yeah. of that no yeah. there's nothing to be ashamed of we're yeah. advocating a dimension of god that is very real we're not acting you see that yeah. um so that was what i was trying to say yeah. that spoke about abe okuta and Amazing. this and um i still i still believe that that conviction is largely true uh it it never comes above the authority of scripture. but i am telling you from a prophetic standpoint that some of those truths hold but at the same time i respect the revelation of everyone you know i don't know what god has shown them and maybe i will learn from them tomorrow Amen. i'm sure i would like to listen to the message of the people who did that post to hear what god has shown them i'm a learner and i'm a student Amen. i'm sure that uh, tomorrow i'll hear what god has said and i will be more than grateful to tell them thank you and i'm not just saying it yeah. in a sarcastic way i'm yeah. saying it sincerely if i study their message today and i find out that god has shown them a dimension higher than what he has shown yeah. me with all humility i will receive it i will adjust and i will thank them you see, all the people who are under my spiritual influence would have been blessed yeah. by them. The yeah. only challenge, and this is the mess a message to the body of Christ, do not find joy in bringing others down mm. to show you are up. Mm. Wow. You see, wow. uh, it's, it's, it does not, it does, it will make people hate you <laughs> because it will end up creating controversy. The yeah. people that like that man of God or that woman of God will end up attacking you yeah. in honor of the person they love. Yeah. So it becomes like for, uh, for Paul and for Apollos. Apollos. Yeah. If the whole world stands against me to throw those people now and criticize them, um, the body of Christ has not profited. Yeah. So I must love the body more than my and my ego. This is a dimension of fatherhood and leadership we are introducing by God's grace to the body that we must love the body more than our reputation mm -hmm. i'm a human being i can make mistakes yeah. you see that i can i can preach something that based on the light i saw at the time i preached yeah. i probably didn't get it right no problem mm -hmm. the most important thing is that we must approach ministry as to when they are sincerity to have the fortitude to come and preach yeah. and then say well i appreciate what you have seen but i think there is a higher light like yeah. this yeah. so submit to it yeah. rather than than coming online and criticizing why don't you do a little podcast a video <laughs> of the say okay apostle or any man of god for that matter this is what you said and i don't agree with this and since i don't agree with this this is what i think is the correct position let me do a little bible study for you 10 minutes 
send it to your media team and say let this be a gift to apostle with love from me a fellow apostle a fellow apostle <laughs> or prophet in the body of christ believe me if i receive that kind of video and i listen to it it will take me back to my bible yeah. and i look and i see that wow okay it's true what this guy said i didn't see the light i will first call him and i'm the kind of person who can acknowledge them publicly mm -hmm. i'm not ashamed to do that yeah. i will say look pastor so 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 or prophet so or apostle this or whoever it is thank you very much for contributing to my spiritual growth yeah. and thank you for helping me align in a greater sense of accuracy mm -hmm. so that now i can teach the people you understand so yeah. I, I think yeah. that that's how we should approach it in the body not to attack and do it doesn't you, you, um, you have nailed it thank you and, and i'm so happy of course so we, we've never talked about this and you just said exactly what we do that, that's how we approach the matter yes we don't and that's why you know some of the people that look to our battle and give them the opportunity of listening to them a lot of them are friends now oh yes you know, yeah. we even go ahead beyond facebook to say this is my phone number call me let's have a it brings this perspective and you bring a perspective because what i found out over the years is that people don't listen to the whole message they just take one minute out that's right <laughs> And at times, if you don't listen to the flow and you just take that one minute out, you take it out of context That's true. and you begin to, and you see some of the people that promote some of these things don't share the entire message. They just take a clip out and they're like, oh, it's wrong here. How can he say this? How can he say that? And they begin to fight it. Let's learn from what he just said now. And I think he has. And, and, and let, let me just say this, is, just a minute or so yeah. on that. That is that some of these people that look like enemies or look like controversial people yeah. there is just their approach that yeah, may be wrong approach, some yeah. of them may be very well intentioned people yeah. in fact you should give them and believe that they will intentionally get up of, of course you, you cannot rule out the fact <laughs> that there may be few who <laughs> may <laughs> just but, but I, I want to give the benefit of doubt we are yeah. believers yeah. and a believer is not just one who has faith in god a yeah. believer is one who walks by love yeah. by this shall all men know that you are my disciples not when you preach well and so on and so forth so i think that there is no problem with that yeah. um i will want to encourage those people let me say this um, when you feel that um, my message or any man of God's message that you respect, there are perspectives in it that you don't agree with, that's all right. Yeah. Don't think it is a shock. It is not a spirit talking. Mm -hmm. It's a man who is talking as inspired by the spirit. Hallelujah. We see in part, we can make mistakes or you can be the one making mistakes, yeah. you know, and all of that. So in any case, the key is to sustain the love. Yeah. In fact, I would recommend this. If you think a man of God has made a mistake that you think can be misleading to the body of Christ, don't come on social media to attack the person. Yeah. Rather, this is my proposition. Take it as Joshua Selman's proposition. Make a video of what you think is correct and send it to him. Or do a Bible study, a little yeah. PDF of a Bible study a correct exegesis of the truth and then i want to encourage men and women of god when people challenge you sometimes they may challenge you in a harsh way they may go on to say a lot of other things that have no business to you know they can challenge you and attack you and now start attacking your church attack your members be calm don't fight back and encourage those who love you too to not fight back in a you know some of those things may not help but i think it's wise do a little bible study yeah. and you can say something like okay man of god i appreciate you for the teaching i listened to this teaching or that one i appreciate you however you said a b c and i think based on my level of growth i think that i have my reservations don't say you are wrong you are misleading the body of christ yeah. this error is bad by what standard do you think you are right yeah. Yeah. You, you, you see that now so yeah. so that that's my encouragement in fact apostle yes. i applaud you have thank you you have just prescribed the remedy and let him the heart here tell what the spirit is saying to the churches final question sir yes let me thank you again mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, I i i i'm not sure whether you have done this before putting your not seat and <laughs> asking all these questions and um what would you your advice for uh, startups in ministry 
who are just about to start their work, what kind of uh, things should they be doing? And um, let me also say this up front, Apostle, we can't finish this today. <laughs> so in front of the whole body of Christ, we are requesting that we do this again as we are led by the Spirit and as, as uh, I don't, like you said, it can't be a one of Yes, that's But right. we also understand the uniqueness of what other things God is doing with you. So those who are starting out, uh, what what should they do? Uh, what should be the emphasis? Especially those who are just about to start out. Okay. Or just who are just recently okay. uh, started their work. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, let me just uh, steal out this time to really honor and appreciate you. Thank of you so course, much. Sure I do not take for granted this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Two things. Um, for those, I expect, for everyone who wants to start ministry i expect that he should currently be connected to a body of believers of some sort maybe a pastor in a church and all of that the first thing is do not start ministry just because you think you observe something in the current church you are in that needs to be corrected oh, wow it is it is a dangerous motivation it will look inspiring at that point but you'll be frustrated eventually let me say it again that means that um, let's assume, unfortunately, back, let's assume the gentleman who said those things about me was a member of my church or my ministry. Just because you detect error, imbalance, and a number of faulty things mm -hmm. in a church, you shouldn't just in anger say, look, I, I don't pray this way, I don't sing this way, I don't preach this way, God is no more here, you hear people say that, and I think I need to leave and go and create somewhere where God is. Now, you will succeed for a while, but it's like you are drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. Wow. You see that? So, the motive and the motivation must be serious and truthful. I, I will tell you that a number of ministries don't start necessarily because the call or the timing was right wow. they are angry at something or someone who did something within the ministry some of them may say i was not given enough platform to preach wow. some of them may say i was maybe they are downplaying and and, and they may be right sincerely speaking mm -hmm. in, in 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 some cases but whatever the issue is um leaving a ministry with a um a, a narrative as though god is not here this i think you people are not accurate i've seen more i've seen further it's a dangerous seed you are sowing wow. because the harvest is always greater than the seed so that's wow. dangerous mm -hmm. so i will tell ministers who want to start up be sure that you are starting ministry because there is a real mandate upon your life mm -hmm. and there is a message mm -hmm. you have a message that is independent of what is right or wrong in your current ministry wow you see your message cannot be to correct what your pastor said that is wrong mm -hmm. that's not a mandate that is long enough for ministry wow. that's number one number two is that um you must ensure that where you are under an authority now let me say this pastors and ministers prophets and leaders are human beings just because they are anointed of god they have emotions it is unfair to tear down a man's ministry paint the man bad you see that try to you know many pastors around the world and and pastor Dele, i'm sure that you may many people may have spoken to you on this and let it be an encouragement lovingly speaking to the body of christ many people are bleeding today in ministry because those who left the ministry the way they left it was not a good model you see some yeah. of them stole things and left some of them um carried out luciferian attitudes they go around carrying about a third of the people indoctrinating the people painting the pastor maybe his wife maybe the church leaders painting them bad, painting them black, and then, you know, contrasting all of that. And it doesn't matter whether they are right or wrong. Mm -hmm. When you want to leave a ministry, there are ethics. Number one, understand that it took a long time to build that. Number two, understand that there are innocent people in the ministry who are at a level of spiritual infancy. Mm -hmm. You must love their growth more than your reputation. Wow. Mm -hmm. Don't be like the Samaritan. 
who left somebody the priest who left the samaritan dying to go and preach he was on his way to go for a program and he saw a samaritan dying and he left that person there to go and do ministry you want to go and do ministry and you don't kill somebody else be before you are going and then number three let me tell you this no matter what it is how right or wrong a man of god is when that man of god has invested in your life and invested in your growth and poured himself or herself honor the history even if you don't honor the future wow honor the fact that that man or that woman of god poured their lives their time their investment into you mm. and to do that don't destroy uh excuse me the ministry or the platform don't do that when you do that you will not succeed yourself mm. you, you, you see that now so i think this is the template many people have when they are passionate about going to start ministry or start whatever the narrative they tear down this church in this church they do abc some come up with all kinds of visions god showed me my pastor is going to hellfire my you know god showed me that he left this church years ago don't say that no it's wrong don't yeah. it's like you are trying to be tall by cutting the head of everybody yeah. it's wrong hmm. so i think that the, 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 the that's the second thing i would tell ministers yeah. give enough time especially if you play um key roles in yeah. that ministry yeah. You see that it yeah. is wise to give enough time so that the church can make adjustments. Adjustment, yeah. You see, I, I think it's I think it's unfair mm. to just wake up and then maybe you are the one who conducts services and then all of a sudden the yeah, pastor yeah. is not there again or the mm. prophet or whoever is not there again, or the accountant is not there again, yeah. and then you say I, I've gone, please. Mm. It's not a good thing. Yeah. You will so wear well um um what you reap. Yeah what you i mean you will reap what, what you sow. sow i meant to say mm. you see so that that's a very important thing um many pastors are bleeding terribly because of the way people left mm. and the trouble is that those people will go and find mm. because these are spiritual patterns yeah. and then they will mentor other people too in light of their mistakes and all the things they are doing so i think it's a correction for the body of christ yeah, and then i want to also talk to fathers and mentors and leaders the truth is that there are people who are in your church and with you for seasons mm. and the truth is that we must i know it's not easy we're human beings mm. and if you have your way you want everybody to stay with you forever but the kingdom will not advance that way yeah. there are times when the, the the people would have exhausted their stay and the pastors and the leaders the prophets apostles must sustain the the emotional flexibility this is not even about spirituality yeah. the the psychological strength to say look i know that your time is over here and all of that i bless you and release you because there have been instances where people sincerely want to go and they follow the most respectful way and in anger some of the pastors they they may laugh with them in the open but they will curse them in the secret the say all way. kinds of things and look forward to their downfall <laughs> and if and when they fall they will now say you see i said it i think we must love god's agenda more than ourselves yeah. and all of that so as themselves must be careful so that they do not unnecessarily antagonize people because of the call of god upon their life i think i think that is a fair balance and then the third thing is um the truth is that ministry is not something to do in a hurry just because you think you are prepared does not mean you are prepared mm. yeah. you see the itch to want to start ministry for many people is just the instincts for leadership mm. that is not coordinated properly yeah. that itch to want to be the the superintendent mm. or that itch, and, and sometimes i will say this respectfully um, sometimes we have to be careful that's why a minister must be careful if you're married may god bless you but those who are not married you have to be careful the kind of person you bring into your life because sometimes marriage can affect some of these things you you marry somebody that is so obsessed for power and it happens both ways well for ma the man and the woman depending on who the anointing is upon and they can push themselves into this obsession i think we can have our own thing and the man or the woman as the case may be may move in honor of their spouses and get into trouble sometimes it happens it is rare but then it, it does happen wow. 
and so i think that that is something that is very very important to watch against those two but um even when you you think you are ready to start up mm. i will tell people don't start by opening a church mm. to just put handbills and say hey i have a new ministry mm. the name of my ministry is abc assembly or abc um cathedral come sunday service will open from next week that's not how ministry starts every ministry starts as a house of prayer wow. it's in the bible it is the pattern mm. so you start by investing in prayer investing in prayer will ward off the forces of darkness mm -hmm. take charge of the spiritual climate wow. and prayer begins to bring the people who are connected to your grace who will now become leaders eventually Amen. the first set of people who come to your ministry are not workers they are leaders mm -hmm. they may not come as leaders they will come like those who came to david in the cave of adulam yeah. weak in debt dejected so it is now your assignment to discern and start to build them Amen. but i will tell this finally it is important important to prepare for ministry anybody who is really in ministry knows that it takes the grace of god yes. otherwise one day you will even collapse yourself you know <laughs> and and all of that so that would be my encouragement wow wow wow, yes. wow 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 i thank the lord Hey guys, <laughs> thank you so much for enjoying movie night with me. Praise the Lord. Let me turn that off. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. We actually didn't plan on doing the second one. I was just going to do the first, the, what was it, like a biography. And since the second one played automatically and I had seen it and I was like, well, maybe they'll enjoy it too. And I see a few of you stayed, you troopers. <laughs> So anyway, thank you. Have a great rest of your um, resurrection weekend. And for those of you in Vision Board course, I'm going to be diligent to post the video lecture for us tomorrow. And um, we'll see how that goes. All right. Love you. Have a great, great. Um... No, oh, that's okay, Sister. <laughs> I was just joking about that. You know what? Ministry kind of scares me. I'm, I'm just be honest. I'm, I'm not a fearful person or anything, but it's just, I'm not even, never mind. I'll just be quiet. So you said I was typing it before I started. <laughs> That's okay. I wasn't, I wasn't being serious about that, but I really do enjoy um, KGPF and you guys having the same mindset, the same heart set to pray and to intercede and for us to love on each other. You have helped to really build me up throughout the week. And um, I'm a better person, a better version of myself because of you. So, all righty. You guys have fun and I'll see you next time. Thank you again, Sister Jacqueline, for the idea. Mwah.